I am five years old. I am sitting on a chair and I can feel the velvet of the seat cushion on the backs of my legs. And my feet don't touch the floor. I'm five years old. I'm sitting in a room in Glastonbury, a town in the southwest of England, which is full of mythology and stories. There are windows. There's a large window here, there's a window here, and a window here. And I'm sitting in my chair, and I'm five years old, and I'm watching the people walking past my house. They have bare feet. They wear wreaths around their head and they hold placards. And they are pilgrims coming to visit Glastonbury Abbey. And I live within half a mile of where Joseph of Arimathea, when he came to England with the grail with the blood of Jesus, where he placed his staff in the ground and it began to grow, where every Christmas it flowers, and every Christmas Eve from the hours of midnight until one in the morning, the animals surround it, fall to their knees, and speak in human tongue. I'm five years old. There are windows here, and here is a bookshelf. I have a book here. I take down my book, and I open it. And my bookmark is a bus ticket, the 376 bus from street to Glastonbury, from swimming pool to home. I open the page. My sister has taught me to read. And I know that on that white page, those black lines can be brought to life. And I begin. In the beginning was the word. Now, I am five years old and I'm reading aloud in the room. And the words come to life in the room. And as I speak them, I feel them vibrate in my body. And the words become music. And I feel so much that I tell myself at five years old, I will never tell anyone what these words make me feel. I am seven years old. I'm sitting at school and there's a book open in front of me. And I'm looking at the black marks on the page. And I'm looking at the perfect black circles. And there's perfect black circles on top of perfect black circles. And there's a mark which is a perfect black circle which has a perfect black tail. And I look at this mark and I think, what would happen if I moved that mark from where it sits between these two words and I put it between those two words? And I realize it would change my world because the comma makes me feel so much. And I swear I will never tell anyone. And now I'm 25 years old. I'm sitting at a table, it is a rough wooden table, and I'm in Madrid in a flat high up above a hot street. My skin is wet with sweat. There's a green blind I've thrown over my balcony to keep out the sun to try and keep the heat down, but it's failing miserably. I pull towards me a typewriter. I have a stack of blank white pages and I pick up one. I place it into the back of the roller and I turn and I turn and I turn and it clicks as it emerges as it comes up in front of me. And I hold it down with a metal bar. The letters are curved. They're back to front. They're reversed, upside down. And there's a ribbon of ink and it waits for me, and it waits for me to place my fingers on the keys. But nothing comes. Because you see, I have realized that to write, I need something. And it's something I don't have, and I need to go and find it. And in that moment while I'm sitting there and the page is still blank, deep down inside me where I keep my secrets about how I feel about language, Something is happening, and a sperm has pierced the wall of an egg. And that egg has embedded itself in the wall of my womb and is growing. 
I'm 30 years old. I'm at university. I've got a baby in my arms. And I'm sitting in the library. And I've signed up for a creative writing course. And I have a task I have to do. I have a notebook in front of me, and it's lined, and I have a pen in my hand. And I have to write. But as I write, my handwriting is too intimate, too close. It is me looking back at me, it is me looking in the brightest, sharpest mirror there has ever been. I write, but I feel sick, because it's me, and it's too much of me. I'm 32 years old, and I'm sitting at my desk in my home, and I have another child. I have a baby sat next to me. And I begin to write. I begin to fill pages. But now I have a machine, and I have the comfort of printed text. No more handwriting. And I'm 40 years old. And I've moved house, and my children are older. And writing is difficult. And I put it aside. And I decide to write plays. And I start to realize that a human being is so complex that we have many, many, many versions of us inside. We are faceted, multi-populated inside. And I'm capable of writing eight different people talking to each other. And my head begins to grow, and my body is growing as my children are growing. And things are changing. And now I'm 50. I'm 50 years old. And I'm walking by the beach, and I have a character in my head, and the character in my head appeared at a drama workshop. It's one of my facets, it's one of my personalities. And I hear a line in my head, and I hear the words as plainly, as clearly as any words I've ever heard. But now I trust myself. You see, I don't carry a notebook. I make things up. And I know that my subconscious is in charge, that I'm not in charge and that it will do this for me. And the act of remembering that line when I get home is not a problem. Because the line has erupted one time, and if it erupts one time, it's going to erupt again. And so I go home, and I begin to write. And the line comes out with no capital letters. The line comes out with small letters. The line comes out with basic punctuation. And when anyone says, oh, it is the perfect circle, like those black perfect circles of full stops. And I write this book. And it is a book about a young woman who is illiterate, who learns to read the Bible. And she enters a room, and there is a shelf of books. And she looks at the spines of the books, and she takes one down. But she cannot read. Because these black marks on the white page mean nothing, but she knows they mean something to other people. And she wants that. And she's going to go and find that. And she learns to read and write. And when she does, she realizes that the book she's reading is the book that I read when I'm five years old, sitting in my chair where my feet don't touch the ground and I feel the velvet behind my legs. And this book that she reads, the first words are in the beginning. And now, today, I don't sit on a chair. I'm standing here in front of you. I'm here now, in this moment, remembering how my five-year-old me read that book and brought down that book. How that 50-year-old me remembered that five-year-old me bringing down that book and reading that book. And I'm here with you now, but when I said those words 10 seconds ago, they've gone and they're in the past and I'm having to remember them because what I'm saying to you now is completely made up. And I'm having to remember what it is that I said to you. Because you see, what you need to know is, yes, I'm here. I'm a 56-year-old woman. But inside me is that 5-year-old child, is the 7-year-old child, is the 30-year-old woman, is the 32-year-old woman, the 40-year-old woman, the 50-year-old woman, and the 56-year-old woman who began this when I started. Thank you.